Welcome back to Paint Your Style. This is actually last week's Paint Your Style that I did as a live that I'm only just getting around to editing. And I decided that I was going to use a heart cookie cutter for it purely because I didn't think I could get the heart symmetrical enough with just like using my own eyes to do it. It had been a weird week. So I ended up switching the sizes just because the first heart felt too big. And then going in, sort of sketching it out in black pen, the first side I just drew out, the second side I did all sketchy. So then I went in and I redid the first side with like sketchier lines, which I much preferred. I didn't like how rigid the first side looked. And then it was time to do the lines for the background. I did really like parts of this image. This was not one of those parts. I really struggled with these wavy bits. I think I drew them like four times. Oh, I drew them twice and then I went in with pen. I was apparently quite brave. And they just like didn't feel right. I do like the ones I did in pen though. Though I wish uh, I had altered the height of them a little bit more in the final image as they just like all end at pretty much the same height. I then had to go in and do a little bit of tidy up on some lines that came off during the process and realized that my pen was actually almost out of ink. It's almost time for my next re-inking video and so stuff is starting to run out of ink and I'm just like trying to nurse it along until it's time to do the next re-inking video. So I was able to get enough ink to finish this piece but did end up re-inking it as soon as I was done. I decided to go with the Rosa Galleries paints, even though I don't necessarily love them, just because they haven't gotten very much use lately, and I decided that maybe I just wanted to play around with them. This was a great idea because it reminded me that I do actually really like some of the colors, it's just others that I don't love, and it's mostly I don't love them when they're compared to other versions of the same color. But based on the colors that I have, which is quite limited, I realized that I was going to have to mix for absolutely everything. And I didn't really pay attention to what I grabbed, and so instead of getting the orangey color I wanted, I ended up with a green, and so I had to start over creating the right color for the ice cream cone because I knew the Quin Gold wasn't actually what I wanted. Once I had found the shade I wanted, I also realized I didn't have very much of it mixed up because I'd just been sort of playing with the colors. So I was hoping that I'd have enough to finish this piece, but I wasn't actually sure. So at this point that I realized I might not actually have enough and we were just getting like the very dregs of the palette and hoping for the best. Because I wasn't taking super accurate color notes, I made sure to separate colors as I went so that it was easier to do swatch sheets. And then I decided that I was going to custom mix the teal up as well, just because the teal that it had initially wasn't what I wanted. And so I went in with their turquoise and a little bit of the, I believe it's magenta gray, I went in with just to see if I could make it the right color. I'm using quite a lot of paint. Normally I wouldn't do that, but because these paints are so inexpensive, I really just didn't care about using a lot of them in this piece and like absolutely drowning them in water to get enough on my palette. I was really happy with this top color. I liked the contrast between the orange and the turquoise and I liked that I had added the magenta gray just to give it a little bit more texture and granulation. I find that the turquoise by itself just doesn't really have enough going on with it. I then had to figure out these background colors because I didn't think that the straight colors would work, seeing as I'd custom mixed for the ice cream cookie thing. And my original plan of just using the color straight from the pan didn't seem like it was going to work anymore. What I decided to do in the end was create a massive pile of the color that I'd used for the cookie and the icing, but then switch it up a little bit so that it was a little bit lighter while still keeping the colors that I originally used in the mix in hopes that it would still like translate that they were the same colors. 
I don't know that I executed it the way I wanted to, but I was really happy with the mixes I was able to get with these colors. In the past, I haven't been happy with these paints just because of their formulation. I find them really sticky. And while I was still finding them sticky, I was happy with how I was getting them to lay down on the paper. So I wonder if they're just like far more paper temperamental than I was led to believe they were. You can really tell like how inexpensive they are based on how I'm using them. Normally I would never like flush paints into a palette, like it's just not something I do, but I knew that I'd need a whole bunch of it. And unlike a professional professional paint, I was just having trouble getting the quantity of pigment I needed without using a whole bunch of water to flush it out of the pan. So we did what we had to do. I also at this point was deciding on my sprinkle colors and decided that I was going to go with color shifters. It's been a while since I've played around with them in a massive piece and not something small. I did the jellies with them a few weeks ago, but this felt different. And so I chose four that I really like that I thought would work well as the sprinkles. While the piece dried enough that I could put sprinkles on it, I worked on the color swatch card. So I use these as references in my studio when I'm stuck on choosing a color palette or just want to look back on what colors I used in a piece and they just tell me all the colors and supplies that I used in a piece, be it inks or like embossing powders, they all go on these cards. So I ended up using five Rosa Gallery colors and then four super shifter watercolors and then the black fuego ink that i've been using a bunch in pieces lately still haven't figured out how to pronounce it and then i labeled everything in one of my inked up fountain pens in this case i reached for my ferrisville press pen the sherry sonata which just happened to be what i had inked up and sitting next to me in my desk because my daily inks pen is currently out of ink Waiting for this page to dry took ages, and then I was very careful to make sure I switched up my brushes and my water cup so that I did not get shimmer paints in my matte water cup or my matte brushes. Everything in my studio is marked, so this cup is marked with shimmer, and my brushes are marked with nail polish on the end to denote that they're shimmer. Unfortunately, the lighting was really bad inside. We were having a snowstorm again, and so... You don't get the true effect of these super shifter watercolors, you really only get them in natural light, unfortunately. And we haven't had any sunlight since, so I haven't been able to take the full on sunlight pictures yet that I want to of this piece. But I do think using sparkles for the sprinkles just like add another layer to it, and it made me really happy.
overall, I really liked this week's Paint Your Style. It was fun to use paints that I don't use all that often, like the Rosa Gallery paints, and then combine them with the Super Shifter paints, which are something that I really like to use. And it was quite a lot of fun to do.